Hi everybody, it's Mark again, and I hope you're enjoying this uh, series on on me repairing a Lux Cuckoo Clock. Uh, part two is going to consist of me putting the movement all back together, put in, in the case, and uh, getting it set up in beat. And so, um, but before I uh, do all that, I want to answer a couple of questions that I've already got from part one. So uh, relax, kick back, grab something to eat, grab something to drink, grab something to smoke if you choose to do so, and let's learn things. And one of the questions I got is, are all the clocks made from Bakelite? The clocks themselves are not made from Bakelite. The uh, bellow tubes are made from Bakelite, the original bellow tubes. And of course, um, my bellows and this clock are not the original bellows because they're wooden bellow tubes. Here's a Blossom Time clock. It's a Sirico case. It's a wood type material. It's kind of like plywood. It's a bunch of pressed wood glued together. Another cuckoo clock. It's a, uh, a small cuckoo clock. Serico wood front. Fitted with a one day movement. Cuckoos once on the half hour. Sorry, once on the hour and once on the half hour. The original bellows were made of Bakelite. This is one of the uh, more expensive uh, Lux Cuckoo Clocks. Oak Leaf Cuckoos. Again, fitted with a one day double weight driven movement. The original bellows were made of Bakelite. It's a beautiful clock. And then this one is even more beautiful. A hunter's cuckoo clock. Circular 1940. Fitted with a one day double weight driven movement. Original bellows were made of Bakelite, but it's a Serco wood carving. And the case on most of the uh, Lux Cuckoo, Lux uh, Pendelette clocks, uh, other Lux clocks are made from Serco. You Google Serco, this is what you get. Circus Ornamental or ornamental company, Serco, American manufacturing company founded in 1890 and based in Syracuse, New York, was best known for molded, molded wood pulp interior decorations and gift and novelty items that resembled hand carving. And here it says... Feels like wood, but it's different kind of art form. I don't want to sign up to all this stuff. And I don't want to get alerts. I got enough alerts on my computer. The new product combined wood pulp from with flour as a binder and other materials. After extrusion, it was cut to pick compression molds. These molds were made from original carvings and real wood by wood carvers. These carvers originally came to the United States from several European companies. I said it's a molded wood. It's similar to um, something like plywood as we know it to today.
But here it goes on. But by the 1930s, the company had also developed an extensive line of gift and novelty items. These pieces compri comprise a cedar wood and also woodite, a combination of wood flower and polymer. In the 1960s, the company began to use injection molding for some of its products, but it did not entirely abandon its old process. These are sold items on eBay. Of course, the Lux Pendulet Clock. They're Circos base, the base. I'm trying to find a, uh, here's a miniature cuckoo, $62. Here's one like mine. 60 60 to include shipping let's see what it looks like and you know this is in pieces it's got a nice label on the back The uh, bellows are not Bakelite material, they're wooden material. Bakelite is, is like a plastic. Original movement. But anyway, I just wanted to show you a little bit of of what these clocks sell for some of them sell for pretty good money they're very collectible items the pendulum light clocks here's one of the clocks that I told you that is one of the most sought after clocks it's parts only. Best offer was accepted, so it's still sold for about two hundred and fifty dollars. Not bad for a one day clock. I don't know if the pendulum there is original. I don't know that much about these clocks. I have group experts that know more about this stuff than I do. I'm not an expert. These bellows look original. They're not wood. They look more like Bakelite material. There's one of these clocks that have been on Marketplace for some time. They're asking like $350 for the thing. I think they're asking a little bit too much myself. And it's been on Marketplace for a while because they're asking $350 for the item. But anyway, we're going to get started uh, working on this clock. But what I like about the Pendulet style clocks is they fit where other clocks don't fit. We got this clock right here. It's a Pendulet clock. This one here. And these three here. 
and then I got that one up there. Now the ones that are made by Lux, the winding hole is at the six o'clock position. This one here is made by Keebler. The winding hole is at the nine o'clock position. Uh, that one was made in Canada. And then I had this blossom clock here. And it's all material made of Cerco. 30 hour movements. So getting back to this movement. We already did a function test. We know that the uh, we got the uh, a bird from bouncing. It no longer bounces. And again, recap, the reason why it was bouncing is because this lever that comes out of the count wheel was sticking above the count wheel. And so every time the um, every time that the wheel went around this lever would bounce off of the count wheel which in turn caused the bird to bounce in and out of the door and so um, I told you before that I'm not going to worry about where the hands are because the hands the minute hand is worn out the hole is so I'm going to um, adjust it the way I do in another video I do need to put the birch assembly on which the birds assembly goes into the hole and then This piece here goes on. And then the screws go on to hold that piece on. So I'm going to put these screws in off camera. Now the verge assembly is on. There's no adjustment on this up and down on either side. The verge and crutch assembly has got a, a clutch type system on it. So you have to adjust it one way or the other to get this to bounce back and forth. This wire leader here fits on a wire that is on this post. So, um, there we have it ticking away. I guess before I put this uh, back into the... Uh, case I'm going to set this movement up on my movement stand um, to show it running inspecting the chains I got one chain had a couple open links repaired them okay then I have another chain if you will see most closely that every one of these links are open 
Some are open more than others. Typically, you could take a pair of pliers and close the chain up. Watch what happens. Let me find a better example. Watch what happens when I close this chain. It comes back open. I get my camera to focus. See, it came, it's open. So, um, and like I said, every one of these links are open. Will the clock function? Honestly, it probably will. But with them being open like this, you could do what you want to do. I'm going to leave the chain on, but if it quits running, I'm going to put it on the time side. But if it quits running, the first thing I'm going to do is replace this chain. And it's easy to replace the chain. All you have to do is get out a new chain, connect it to the old chain, on the um, on the uh, weight side, and then pull the chain through the ratcheting system to where the new chain is inside the clock, and then disconnect the old chain, and then connect your hooks back up for the uh, for the weight and the washer for the other end. If this was an antique clock, you know, with the original brass chains, yes, I would sit here and go through every one of these links and close them up because original chain, 100 plus year old clock, brass chains these are I'm sure metal chains this is a magnet I'm, I lied this is a brass chain see magnet these chains are brass so, original chains, so I'm going to keep them with the clock. Here I have the movement on my stand, and I want you to pay attention to the governor band. As I rotate the minute hand, there the clock is cuckooing. As I rotate the minute hand, the governor pen is going to spin a half a turn. There it goes to spin. Now the clock is in warning. The third wheel warning pin is no longer hitting the tab on that lever that I was telling you about. That is because the clock is in warning 
as the minute hand continues to rotate and this uh, it goes in a warning about five minutes till the hour as the hand continues to rotate the third wheel warning pin will now the governor fan the third wheel warning pin will leave where it is at allowing the governor fan to spin allowing it to cuckoo Let me show you one more time Governor fan fixing the spin. Spun a half a time. The third wheel warning pin is now hitting that part of that lever, which is known as the lift lock lever. And whenever it drops, it will allow the governor fan to spin and the third wheel will move and it will cuckoo as you can see the cuckoo is not bouncing just getting caught up on the movement with this wire let me show you again currently the third wheel warning pin is hitting the tab let me see if I could get you in there the third wheel warning pin is hitting the tab on that Just trying to get you in there it's right there. It's hitting the tab on part of that lever that goes into the count wheel. When it goes into warning, it will now hit the part of the lift lock lever, which is part of this lever that hits those two pins. And when that lever drops, it allows the third wheel warning pin to spin. Governor fan fixing to go into warning. There it spun. Third wheel warning pin is now hitting the um, lift lock lever. Lift lock lever dropped. The chain came off the wheel. No big deal. With the B amplifier on, I can listen to the uh, clock tick away. Uh, right now, it doesn't sound that great. But in order to adjust this, you have to adjust the uh, the the crutch assembly. Remember I told you it has a uh, clutch type system on it. And you have to wait for the uh, the clock to settle down after you adjusted things. And I don't like the foot the way it's bent. I'm going to straighten it out. I don't know if you can see it or not. If I put it in the right spot. The, uh, the foot has got a space that the pendulum leader wire is bouncing back and forth off of. i turn my camera around so you can see it better. There you should be able to see that Pendulum leader wire bouncing off that slot in the foot. And I'm going to wait until it stops. And then that's the, the way that I'm going to bend 
the crutch toward whichever side it is resting on. That's the way I'm going to bend it. So right now it's resting on the left side of the foot. So I'm going to bend just like in all my other videos. I'm going to bend the crutch to the left just a little bit. And I'm going to continue doing this until I get it in beat. As you can hear, it sounds really good now. And it doesn't take that long to adjust it. If you watch where the uh, pendulum leader wire is inside that foot and it's out of beat, the side that it stays on the longest is typically the side that you have to adjust it to because it's it's uh, staying on that side too long. So now it's time to put this movement back into its case. And one thing I wanted to mention, after you put the uh, crutch assembly back on, the virgin crutch assembly, don't forget to oil the pivots and the entry and exit pallets. It only takes a drop on the inside of the entry and exit pallets on the verge assembly and then you run it around and that way all the oil gets on the escapement wheel. Like I said, only a, a minute drop. Sounds pretty good, huh? Before we put the movement in the case, if your label is peeling off, I have another video where a friend of mine and a friend of his showed taking clear tacky glue, mixing, mixing it in water, and using it as a paint to uh, paint over the label, which will um, um, put a uh, coating that when it dries, it stick is sticking to the uh, the door or whatever. And so, uh, again, it's clear tacky glue, aliens clear tacky glue, and a water uh, diluted in water, and using a paintbrush to uh, to put that on. Here I have the case all cleaned up, shined up. What you use is totally up to you. I've got different stuff. I've used Old English Oil. Most of my collection time frame. I also have Howard Beaton Wax, um, New Life Furniture Mask, and I bought this stuff. At the dollar store here a while back. It was as seen on TV. That's what I cleaned this stuff up with. Again, but what you use is totally up to you. Um, how much time you want to spend. The more time you spend cleaning up the case, the better it looks, obviously. Now this topper was nailed on and I don't know if that's how they originally put the toppers on but it's not like your typical topper it is nailed on brass chains I can't use a magnet to put the uh, to put these chains in, so I'm going to have to feed them one at a time down those holes.
and make sure you when you feed them that you don't get wrapped up in the chain itself last one remember I told you that uh, this isn't held in place by a washer that is normally on this minute wheel with minute pinion so um, I'm gonna feed it and hopefully yeah, I'm gonna have to feed it with the uh, clock with the movement like this Hopefully I can hit the hole and everything is all well. Good. Time to put some screws in. Four screws. And we're going to do that off camera. What well, didn't y'all remind me about this string? Remember I told you there's a string or a wire to connect to it? Well, after I got the four screws in, I remembered that I needed to put a string on. So I got the string on, but now I have to feed it through that small hole. And that's going to be fun. Wrapping painter's tape around the string, taking a toothpick, feeding it through the hole. I got the string through the hole. I will add weight to it afterwards so it doesn't get in the way of the chain. But now I can pull on that string and you see it, it takes the lever out of the count wheel in case your clock is out of sync. I still have to put the uh, connect the bird on to the door. The wires through the door. It was through the door. Now to connect the wire to the uh, the door itself, and with the, prevent the wire from going back in. Try so use these hemostat tools. That way I can control the wire. And something is not allowing the door to go back in. The bird to go back in. That's where I wish they had an access door on this side. Trip it again. And the bird, the door still isn't going back in. 
not for sure at this moment what it is. The bird was doing just fine. It might be the hinge on the door preventing him from going back in. It might be the spring on the bird post that needs tightened up some more. And people wonder why you go cuckoo for cuckoo clocks. With the uh, <clears throat> bird release from the door, <clears throat> watch what happens. He snaps back in there the way he should. When the wire is connected to the door, he doesn't, and the door stays open three quarters of the way. I'm thinking that the wire that connected to the bird to the door was too long it broke anyway or it's breaking as you can see it's broken so I'm gonna have to uh Put a different bend in this wire if I could still use this wire. And see what happens. Just when I th think I've seen it all, I don't even have the wire closed yet. And as you can see, he's not wanting to go back into the uh, door and into its case. He's not wanting to pull on the wire is not wanting to pull the door closed but if I was to take this wire off you see how fast he went back in there that is intriguing to me it, I'm I've never seen that happen before They say if you learn something, or at least I say, if you learn something every day, then it's going to be a good day. As soon as I connect this wire to this door, he no longer bounces. I gotta get this camera out of my way to do it. Again, wires connected to the door. He doesn't want to go inside. I guess there's an outside bird. He likes staying outside. No position whatsoever does he snap back. Okay, the Waterbury Company, you got me intrigued.
I'll figure it out. It's just going to take me a while. And taking the movement back out, the bird post is bent a little bit. If you can watch up here as I move it. It goes from the outside to the inside. So it's bent some. So I'm going to take it off and try to straighten it out. I don't know if you can see that. You see how it goes from the outside to the inside? And if these levers here are not in the right spot, if I push them down, the bird never goes back inside. But if I lift it up, the bird goes back inside. I loosen them up um, before I started videoing just to see what was going on. But I think the main culprit is this is bent. And you might be able to see it. It's got a bow in it. How do I prove that to you? Anyway, there's a bow in it. I got it in my drill just so you can see that it's bowed. You see how it's bowed? And that is the issue. Now to straighten it out. Now, I, I had to bend the bird over because it kept getting in my way. It's a lot better than what it was. I'm going to see if I can straighten it out some more. I got the bird post back on. I tightened up the wire. As you can see, it no longer goes from the outside to inside. So when I put everything back together, it should close the door, but I'm, I have a doctor's appointment that I have to go to, so it'll have to wait until I get back. I hope y'all are enjoying this video. I hope that you learn things, and I want to show you one, one thing before we stop. These have to be adjusted just right. You see the the bird does not want to go back. And when I push up on this a little bit, it's going to slam back. Do you see that? While you're tightening these up, it might have moved on you, so you need to check it again and before you put it back into the case. You need to bring it all the way forward and let it go. And if you're happy with it, put it back in the case. I'm happy with that, 
that should close the door. But just like that, it got hung up. Just like that, it got hung up. And I have to figure out why. I think it's getting hung up on this lever here. So I need to bend this lever out of the way. Of course, that time it got hung up on my rope. There's a delay. A slight delay. When I grab hold of that wire. And that don't make sense. Because when I push it. There's no delay. But when I grab hold of that wire. And let go. There's a slight delay. So I need to adjust those more. These tabs need to be adjusted more. And tightened up, obviously. More to do when I get back. I want to talk a little bit about, a little bit more about what happens to the clock when it's done cuckooing. And I don't have the count wheel on. And this applies to all count wheel type clocks. There might be a little bit of difference in the setup, but basically it applies to all count wheel clocks. This is the third wheel with warning pin. There is the warning pin right there. This is the lever that comes out of the count wheel. This part goes into the count wheel. This lever right here trips the bird to function. And this lever right here goes into a cam that has a B in it. And you should be able to see, I'm going to turn it, so you can see it more. There's that B right there. When the clock is done cuckooing. This lever falls into that B notch of this wheel right here and then the third wheel warning pin hits the end of that lever and it all has to happen all at the same time or it will continue to cuckoo So when I trip it, it, co it comes, <clears throat> when the clock goes into warning, the ply wheel moves just a little bit 
to allow that third wheel warning pin to go underneath this tab of this lever right here. Again, this lever has got this piece right here that goes into the count wheel. This lever right here is what trips the bird to go out. But when it goes into warning, the third wheel warning pin goes underneath the lever until the minute hand continues to rotate, which allows the third wheel warning pin to clear this lever. This lever right here is what the minute wheel trips. You see it tripping? It's lifting it up. This lever is part of this lever right here. Not this lever, but this lever right here. Now, on some clocks, this lever is just a piece of wire that goes from here, and it's curved to go around the second wheel, strike second wheel, and then it comes back down. But the third wheel warning pin, when it goes into warning, it catches that curved piece that's going around the second wheel. And whenever this lever drops off of the pins on the hour or on the half hour is when the third wheel warning pin clears this lever that goes around the second wheel. These wires are preventing me from doing all the function tests, but I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you again. When it goes into warning, and I talked about this earlier in the video, when it goes into warning, the fly will move like a half a turn. When that fly is moving, the third wheel warning pin is clearing this tab and it's now hitting this lever right here which is connected to this lever right here whether it's a piece of metal or a piece of wire it all functions the same way on every one of these count wheel clocks even if you have an antique cuckoo clock that has wooden plates they all function in the same manner as far as the third wheel warning pin hitting this tab and then when it goes into warning it's hitting this wheel the the lever that goes around the second wheel until this lever drops. When that lever drops, it allows it to spin. Now granted, there's too much space between this tab and the count wheel. And because there's space, if I was to tilt this upright, the the cuckoo bird is going to bounce as it goes in and out of while well, it's cuckooing. It, 
if this lever is not in line, if you were to take a, a straight edge and you go straight up this line right here, this lever right here has to be parallel with this line on this notch that we'll call it because that's what it is. If this lever is not parallel with this notch, this lever will get in a bind as it is cuckooing and it might not come out of the, uh, the slot. It just got through finishing cuckooing the hour. Watch the fan as I put it in morning. Do you see the fan spin a half a turn? That's because it's in morning because I have this lever up in the air and I've got pressure on the uh, great wheel. When it, whenever I drop this lever, the third wheel warning pin is going to clear that lever that is attached to this inside the movement, and the third wheel warning pin will spin, and the governor will fan will spin. And that was on the half hour. Again, I'm going to put pressure on the great wheel and I'm going to lift this lever up, which indicates the clock going into warning. Watch the governor fan. Do you see it spin? And when I dropped it, it allows the third wheel warning pin to clear everything and the clock is in cuckoo mode now. As my thumb gets sore from putting all that pressure on the great wheel. So I'm going to take the count wheel off one more time. I'm going to explain this one more time because... I want to get this across to people because this is the most confusing part. When you take this movement apart, that's why I say use Rodico. When you take this movement apart, this is a Lux clock, so it doesn't have a gong. But when you take this movement apart, you want the what's known as the eight point star wheel tabs to be barely off the gong. That way the high note and the low note lip levers are in the right position. And that's why you use Rodico. And then you want the second wheel Right now, the second wheel, which has got that cam on it, the one, it's got a notch right here is what it, is what it looks like. The darkened area that I use with this permanent marker is where the space is you see that cam, the open space? That's where the space is, is where that darkened area is. And so 
this lever here is balled in, has fell in to that open space. The third wheel warning pin is hitting the end, the very end of this lever right here. And then this lever right here, again, whether it's a piece of metal or a wire that goes over and then over the second wheel, and then it connects to this pen right here, and then it connects to this lever right here. When the clock goes into warning, this lever is clearing the third wheel warning pin so it catches this lever right here. I'm, I'm doing it for you in slow motion. I'm lifting this lever. I'm turning the great wheel. The third wheel warning pin is now cleared, has now cleared this tab right here. But it is catching the lever that goes around the second wheel. And as soon as I let go of the lever in front, which is, again, the same thing as this wheel here spinning, it goes into warning at five minutes till the hour. At on the hour or on the half hour, when this lever drops, it allows the third wheel warning pin to clear that lever, which allows the third wheel to spin, which allows the governor wheel to spin. So if your clock continues to cuckoo, it's because this lever here, the third wheel warning pin, the second wheel was not set up when you put the movement back together. Or one last scenario, this lever here is too close to this lever here, which kicks the bird out and the bird is sticking out, it is staying out, and it's not allowing this lever here to drop. Or this spring, there's always a spring to push this lever down. You see when I let go of it, it's, it automatically drops. That's because of the spring that's on this lever. I hope this helps. God bless. Here I have the uh, movement all back together. I don't have the hands on. As always, I'm going to test it for a day or two. But pulling the string, as you can see, the cuckoo bird comes out of the door. It's not a very loud cuckoo, and that's because the bellows were changed. But come on this side so you can see him come out better. But anyway, it's up and running. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I hope that y'all enjoyed this video of me working on this Lux 30-hour cuckoo clock. I hope that you learn things. Um, I'm 
gonna leave it running for a day or two before I put the hands and the rings and all that on it. Uh, so uh, to me, it's another clock in working order. And so uh, uh, once I get them in working order, I don't really care uh, anymore about the clock. As long as it's taken away, as long as it's functioning, that's the only thing I care about. And you'll see uh, a lot of my clocks where I use wires for the hooks and for the rings and just left them running that way and never never got around to uh, putting the proper rings and hooks on them because, like I said, once I get the clock working, I lose interest in it, I guess. Uh, I got... Mainly it's because I got way too many other clocks to work on. So uh, putting a ring or a hook on a chain is minor detail that I just never got around to doing it. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I don't know what I'm going to do next. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button because it's free to do so. And uh, may God bless each and every one of you.